Shown here are the contents of a front wheel bearing kit for one side of the car, along with a tube of high temperature wheel bearing grease specifically for Mercedes Benz. Begin by removing the front brake assembly, shown in our tech article and video on brake pad and disc replacement. You can find these by following the link at the end of this video. Once the caliper pads and discs are removed, you'll have access to the wheel bearing hubs as shown here. Remove the dust cap from the front of the wheel hub. In some cases, the cap will just gently slide off using a screwdriver against the lip as shown here. Sometimes you need to use a little penetrating spray around the outer edge and let it soak in to help ease it off. Here is the hub with the dust cap removed. An axle nut sits in the center. It's a good idea to wipe off any excess grease on the nut. The green arrow points to the hex bolt, which clamps the axle nut in place. Use a 5mm hex socket to loosen the clamp on the axle nut. Once loose, you should be able to easily remove the nut from the spindle. With the axle nut removed, you will be able to pull the hub off. As you do, the outer wheel bearing will pop out. As you can see here, it's a tapered roller bearing that fits inside a race pressed into the hub. Check the bearing for any signs of discoloration or pitting. These will be signs that the bearing is worn. This is what the hub looks like after you've pulled it off the spindle. Clean all the grease off the spindle and look for any grooves or pitting. If the spindle shows any of these, you'll want to replace it. With the wheel hub removed from the car, turn it over onto the back side. You will see a grease seal pressed inside. First, you'll need to remove this seal to remove the inner bearing and race. Use a seal puller to remove the old grease seal from the wheel hub. It will take a fair amount of force to pry the old seal from the hub. Don't be afraid if the old seal deforms or bends as you remove it. These seals are designed as a one-time use item and you'll likely destroy it as it comes out. Once the old seal is removed, you can extract the rear wheel bearing from the hub. Take a look at the face of the needle bearing for any signs of pitting, scratching, or discoloration. Once the tapered wheel bearings are removed, you'll have to remove the races that remain inside the hub. The green arrow shows the race for the larger inner bearing, while the purple arrow shows the race for the smaller outer bearing. To remove the outer bearing race, you will need to use a drift, or in our case, a 30 millimeter socket will fit inside the bore. This helps to apply an even force to all sides of the race. Use a hammer and pound the race out of the hub. This will take a fair amount of force to drive out and is probably the hardest part of the job. For the larger race on the opposite side, you will have to use a smaller socket and hit the edges of the race at an angle. It helps to hit the race around the diameter of the edge to drive it out evenly. Take care not to damage or scratch the inside bore of the wheel hub. Just take your time and keep slowly at it. Once both races are removed, Clean the inside of the wheel hub and look for any wear on the inside. Like the spindle, if there are any deep grooves on the inside or pitting, replace the hub. Shown here is the new inner race bearing. Position the new race in the same orientation as the old one. The tapered section of the race should face as shown in the photo here. Now drive the bearing race into the hub until it sits against the bottom flange of the hub. Typically, you would want to use a drift. However, I found that a ball joint socket for a Porsche 911 is the exact same diameter as the race. Take your time and make sure the race goes in straight. It is very easy to cock the race in the bore. Now take the high temperature grease and coat the outside of the new bearing. Before installing the bearing into the wheel hub, it is necessary to pack it with grease. The idea here is to fill all the open spaces of the needle bearing with grease. This will evenly distribute the grease throughout the bearing. There are a couple of different ways of doing this. You can buy a wheel bearing packer, which uses pressure to push grease in, or rotate the bearing back and forth while pushing grease in. 
it's a good idea to apply the grease a bit on the heavy side in the bearing. Be sure to also put a coat of grease on the face of the bearing race. Once the bearing is packed, drop it in place on the hub. It's not a bad idea to hold the inner part of the needle bearing and then turn the hub to distribute more grease throughout the bearing. Shown here is the new grease seal that covers the rear wheel bearing. Clean up any grease that may have gotten on the outer surface of the hub where the seal mounts and center it. Then carefully tap the grease seal into place using a flat piece of metal or wood to ensure the seal does not get caulked in the bore on the wheel hub. Keep tapping the seal until it bottoms out in the bore. Now turn the whole hub over and clean the mating surface for the outer wheel bearing race. Shown here is the new race ready to be installed. Center the new race in the hub and carefully check that it is straight. Like the inner bearing race, you'll want to use either a drift or a socket to tap the outer race into the hub. Be careful not to cock the race in the bore when driving it in. Keep driving the race down until it hits its stops on the flange. Coat the spindle with a good amount of high temperature wheel bearing grease. In this case, we are using the factory supplied grease from Mercedes-Benz. Now fit the wheel hub back over the spindle and push it back until the seal pops over the flange on the back of the spindle. Pack the front wheel bearing with the high temperature grease like you did with the rear bearing. Like before, take your time and make sure that all the spaces in the bearing are coated evenly. Fit the bearing into the wheel hub. Keep in mind that the tapered section of the bearing fits into the race facing inward. This picture shows the setup of a dial indicator on a wheel hub if you use this method to adjust the bearing runout. Most people snug down the nut until they feel a little friction and back off a quarter turn. Installation is the reverse of removal. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.